Thursday of the second week of Advent. Let us pray. O God, who through your blessed Son has given to us the hope of everlasting life, we praise you that you have assured the same to us by the prophecies and promises of your word. Even when our first parents fell, you promised the seed of the woman who should bruise the serpent's head. To our father Abraham, you declared that in his seed all families on earth would be blessed. You revealed in your law wonderful types of figures of your Christ who was to come. You spoke to your servant David of one who would spring from him and sit upon his throne forever. You foretold abundantly by your prophets the sufferings of our Redeemer and the glory that would follow. You marvelously prepared his way among the kingdoms of the earth. Before in your own time you sent him to be born as a man. And as we praise you for your past promises, which you have graciously fulfilled, so may we be ever looking for the fulfillment of those that yet remain. O hope of the sons of men, accomplish the number of your elect and hasten the day of your appearing. Come in the clouds of heaven and gather your saints unto yourselves forever. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Our morning psalm is Psalm 37, 1 through 17. Don't get upset over evildoers. Don't be jealous of those who do wrong, because they will fade fast like grass. They will wither like green vegetables. Trust the Lord and do good. Live in the land and farm faithfulness. Enjoy the Lord, and he will give what your heart asks. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust him. He will act and will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, your justice like high noon. Be still before the Lord and wait for him. Don't get upset when someone gets ahead someone who invents evil schemes. Let go of anger and leave rage behind. Don't get upset. It will only lead to evil. Because evildoers will be eliminated, but those who hope in the Lord, they will possess the land. In just a little while, the wicked won't exist. If you go around looking around their place, they won't be there. But the weak will inherit the land. They will enjoy a surplus of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous, grinding their teeth at them. But my Lord just laughs at them because he knows that their day is coming. The wicked draw their swords and bend their bows and bring down the weak and the needy to slaughter those whose way is right, but the sword of the wicked will enter their own hearts. Their bows will be broken. Better is the little that the righteous have than the overabundant wealth of the wicked. The arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord supports the righteous. The Old Testament reading is Isaiah 7, 1-9. In the days of Ahaz, Jotham's son and grandson of Judah king Uzziah, Aram's king Rezin, and Israel's king Pekah, Ramaliah's son, came up to attack Jerusalem, but they couldn't overpower it. When the house of David was told that Aram had become allies with Ephraim, their hearts and the hearts of their people shook as the trees of the forest shake when there is a wind. But the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out to meet Ahaz, you and your son Shear Jashub, at the end of the channel of the upper pool, by the road to the field where the laundry is washed, and say to him, Be careful. Stay calm. Don't fear. Don't lose heart over these two pieces of smoking torches, over the burning anger of Rezin, Aram, and Ramalia's son. Aram has planned evil against you with Ephraim and Ramalia's son, saying, 
Let's march up against Judah, tear it apart, capture it for ourselves, and install Tabal's son as king. But the Lord God says it won't happen. It won't take place. The chief of Aram is Damascus. The chief of Damascus is Resin. In 65 more years, Ephraim will be shattered as a nation. The chief of Ephraim is Samaria, and the chief of Samaria is the son of Ramalia. You don't believe this. You can't be trusted. New Testament Epistles, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1-12 Brothers and sisters, we have a request for you concerning our Lord Jesus Christ's coming and when we are gathered together to be with him. We don't want you to be easily confused in your mind or upset if you hear that the day of the Lord is already here. Whether you hear it through some spirit, a message, or a letter supposedly from us, don't let anyone deceive you in a way. That day won't come unless the rebellion comes first and a person who is lawless is revealed, who's headed for destruction. He is the opponent of every so-called God or object of worship, promotes himself over them. So he sits in God's temple, displaying himself to show that he is God. You remember that I used to tell you these things while I was with you, don't you? Now you know what holds him back so that he can be revealed when his time comes. The hidden plan to live without any law is at work now. But it will be secret only until the one who is holding it back is out of the way. Then a person who is lawless will be revealed. The Lord Jesus will destroy him with a breath from his mouth. When the Lord comes, his appearance will put an end to him. When a person who is lawless comes, it will happen through Satan's effort with all kinds of fake power, signs, and wonders. It will happen with every sort of wicked deception of those who are heading towards destruction because they have refused to love the truth that would allow them to be saved. This is why God will send them an influence that will mislead them so that they will believe the lie. The result will be that everyone will be judged who is not convinced by the truth, but is happy with injustice. Our Gospel reading for today is Luke 22, 1-13. through 13. The festival of the unleavened bread, which is called Passover, was approaching. The chief priests and legal experts were looking for a way to kill Jesus because they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went out and discussed with the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard how he could hand Jesus over to them. They were delighted and arranged payment for him. He agreed and began looking for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them, a time when the crowds would be absent. The day of the unleavened bread arrived. When the Passover had to be sacrificed, Jesus sent Peter and John with this task. Go and prepare for us to eat the Passover meal. They said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? Jesus replied, When you go into the city, a man carrying a water jar will meet you. Follow him to the house he enters. Say to the owner of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will show you a large upstairs room already furnished. Make preparations there. They went and found everything just as he told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. Receive our benediction. The Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.